Hello, I'm Steve Barsick Amstel with High Tech Design Safety. This is the next segment in our ongoing SIMI S2 training course. Please like and subscribe below so that you can get ongoing notifications as these come out. Last time we did section 9.5, which is industrial hygiene and exhaust ventilation. The section we're covering now is section 9.6, manuals which include all the documentation required to be provided to the end user. This section is almost a summary of the requirements throughout S2 for the documentation required. And I say almost because it's not, it's not quite a full summary. It's a good one, but there are other items within S2 that need to be included. And as this video series goes on, we'll outline those other requirements for you as we get to them. Like I said a moment ago, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like a copy of our list of items that need to be concluded in the documentation provided to the end users, please reach out and contact me. The manufacturer should supply manuals that detail the requirements for the safe installation, operation, maintenance, service, decontamination, and pretty much everything else that deals with the equipment, including facilitization, um, chemical drains, exhaust, all of these items will be included in the manuals. Some of that documentation may be in ancillary documents, but those should also be as appendixes in the manuals. These manuals should describe the initial intended use of the equipment and typically the baseline chemicals used. The manuals should conform to SIMI S13. SIMI S13 is a guideline for what needs to be in the manuals and how that data should be presented, including how caution statements, warning, danger statements, and other data should be presented. SIMI S13 is an excellent resource for your tech writing team or your engineers or whoever is compiling the manuals as you go along. In addition to the requirements within SIMI S13, the manuals will need to include data on routine electrical maintenance and service tasks, specifically type four tasks, which mean tasks that must be performed with the equipment energized. Now we recommend that you design your equipment so that's not necessary, or provide shielded and guarded access points. As S2 notes, it would be best to design that risk out of the product. However, if it is still there, it needs to be detailed and instructions on how to perform it safely need to be completed. Further, you will need to provide lockout tagout information, the lockout tagout process and procedure for the equipment. This includes how to turn the equipment off, to release all stored energy, uh, maybe to release any pressures, to purge the system, everything needed to put the equipment in a safe state and then lock that equipment out, tag it out so it may be serviced without hazard. Next, you'll need to have a full description of the EMO circuits and functions. Typically, that would start off with a drawing showing where there are EMO switches, which is an emergency off button, sometimes also called an emergency stop. However, that has other functions and purposes. Additionally, there should be a table which delineates what happens when you press the EMO, the emergency off button. For example, what does turn off? What does remain energized? What hazards remain after the EMO is turned off? Um, for example, do you have a large heating circuit that may take 20 or 30 minutes to cool down? Is there pressure being maintained somewhere else? Or does vacuum need to be maintained somewhere else? Is exhaust still operating? We would hope so. But in some cases, the EMO needs to turn the exhaust off for other purposes. All that information would be included here in this section. Next, we need to provide a list of materials and hazardous materials used in the service and maintenance of the equipment. So for example, if you're using any cleaners or solvents, to clean or maintain the equipment. Those need to be detailed with potential exposure rates and protective equipment to prevent exposure. Or for example, if your system uses uh, mercury lamps, those items, or any other item in the equipment that might have a hazardous nature that is not part of the process. 
all of those materials need to be stated in this section. The next section lists anything that might become solid waste from the equipment. So solid waste is different from the hazardous materials and the hazardous waste in the last section. So let's say you have um, non-hazardous water filters, um, some other components, um, O-rings that are not contaminated. All that other solid waste needs to be listed as part of what would be generated during maintenance and operation of the equipment. Next, we need to provide a detailed list of maintenance and inspection procedures for the safety systems. This really dovetails with the EMO section earlier, but how do you check and maintain that EMO circuit? How do you verify that the EMO circuit is working and how often should you do that? Additionally, interlocks. How often should you verify door interlocks, leak interlocks, or exhaust interlocks? How often and how would you do it and how would you accomplish it in a safe and effective manner such that nobody gets hurt, the machine is still well taken care of and not damaged during this process. This next section doesn't apply to all equipment, but it does apply to all equipment with lifting devices. So any equipment that has a crane or lifting tool that is used with the equipment or used to maintain the equipment, a full list of instructions, specifications, maintenance, testing, labeling details, and everything for your lifting equipment needs to be accomplished. And just let me make a quick aside, all that lifting equipment also needs to be evaluated, certified, and tested as well. And we can help you with those processes if you have that equipment in there in your process and maintenance tool as well. The next section is what would be unintended releases of chemicals. There might be a gas cabinet that has unwelded fittings in it. Those are potential unintended release points. There might be chemical supply lines with uh, fittings of some type that might leak. There might be filters that need to be changed that might cause a release or leak. All of those unintended release points need to be detailed. And then also, what is the containment for that? Is there an exhaust? Is there a containment tray or drain? Is there a leak sensor or gas sensor or an exhaust sensor for that? Detailing how all of those unintended releases are managed and where they might occur. And then the final section that we'll deal with today is for equipment decontamination. So this will detail what you will do at the end of life or if you intend to ship this equipment to another site. Where might there be residual materials? How would you purge out your liquid chemical system, your gas system, any parts that might be contaminated with residual, how you might remove those, what protective equipment you would need, how you would need to dispose of those materials. Um, further, how you might recycle the equipment, what parts might go for solid waste, what other parts might go for plastics or metals recycling or electronics recycling. All of that end of life or decommissioning information goes in this section. Thank you for watching this video. I know this is a lot of information today and we'll keep getting through this. It's a great way to get your team the data they need to comply with SIMI S2. Please like and subscribe below. Send us comments and let us know if you need any information. Also contact me if you'd like a list of these requirements so that we can help you get there and get your equipment certified.